presenting the detecting the not power shell gang uh with Taz and with that I will let Taz take it away. All right, thank you so much. Uh hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this talk uh title uh, detecting the not powershell gang. Uh it's by me, Taz. Uh you can find me on Twitter anywhere else Taz manager. Uh all right, let's get to know me for a little bit. Uh, I'm a threat hunter working for a major Canadian uh communication company. We also do MSP, MSSP, ISP, whatever you can think of. Uh, so my main task in this uh, company is to do threat hunting, a lot of involvement with threat intelligence also, and a lot of automation, which is programming, uh, coding, etc. I have some previous experience in application security, uh, and also some security auditing slash legal. Uh, I graduated from Sheridan College, so I am based in Toronto, Canada. So if you are around, you know, like if you're a company around Canada and you're looking for good talents, you can definitely look into that school. So yeah, so that's pretty much me uh, with my medium, small security budget, fighting uh, the bad people well, one lock at a time. All right, so if you ask like you just do work, no, I do play a lot. I like to do fun security stuff, CTF. I like presenting, attending conferences. I also love to do photography, uh, specifically astrophotography, some landscape photography. Also, I do have drone and just taking pictures and videos. I, I play guitar at times and I love to go to festivals and concerts. Uh, and of course, uh, like everyone else, gaming is something that it's always fun to do. Uh, just some pictures of me uh, doing stuff, taking picture of stuff, uh, just to show that I'm not working all the time. All right. First of all, let's start with disclaimer. Uh, all the opinions uh, are my own, and this doesn't reflect uh, any views of my employer. So with that in mind, let's move forward. So also notes, uh, this presentation, it's actually a compressed version of similar presentation that I did in Hackfest last year. So if you would like to see more about the tools, uh, demonstration, etc., you can go watch it on Hackfest YouTube channel. The link is there. Uh, the slides also the extended for one available on my github okay so let's talk about the content we we just you know uh talking about me <laughs> uh, so we get three major parts we'll have some introduction about the the gang itself uh, how do we detect each member of the gangs there's some bonus detection there's some bonus uh, members of the gang and we close everything with some outro and a q a at the end uh, yeah, so in this section, we'll get the basic understanding of what is exactly not PowerShell gang, not PowerShell tools. So I did this research uh, roughly like one to two years ago, uh, and I see a bunch of, we actually see a bunch of tools that acting the same way, uh, that act to try to avoid PowerShell security logging and mechanism, but they achieve it with different ways. So this is really, interesting to me so i just pretty much bundled them together and then yeah build detection for all of them and then see the unique way each one of the tools uh doing so one question you're going to ask like why these tools are even exist why don't they just use powershell well because the powershell love blue team this is a blog post that they posted back in 2015 when they released uh, version 5 of powershell uh, they released a lot of security feature and it is actually really bad for red team. So pretty much friendship ended with the red team. Now blue team is Microsoft best friend. So is it that bad? Uh, actually it is, um, you get protected logging. So when, when, whenever you type anything, PowerShell will be locked. Whenever you enter script, you enter commands, it will be locked. If the blue team have centralized team, that's it. That's the end for the defender. Sorry, for the attacker, right? Uh, also, MC integration, which is anti-malware uh, mechanism. So there's a lot of bypass being released, but this is pretty much a never-ending race between Microsoft and then the right team slash uh, offensive tool makers. So they bypass, they patch, they bypass, they patch. It's just never-ending. And lastly, we get the constraint language mode, uh, CLM, that 
able to limit the capability of the sensitive uh, in, in the sensitive environment, for example, in your PCI DSS server, in your production server, you can limit things to do with PowerShell. So that's not really good, actually. Five years later, so there was this uh, Emma, uh, Ask Me Anything event going on in one of the uh, Slack channel of one of the big security company in the US. So I just jump in and ask a question. From your recent engagement, do you still use PowerShell at all? And then most of the answer is like, uh, not really. I, we just drop it. We don't really use it. So that's the idea how bad it is. Even five years later, people just start forgetting PowerShell at all. And that's why we have the whole game. So now we understand what's the not PowerShell. And then let's move forward and just get some understanding about the detection. Uh, make sure uh, that you have these requirements ready uh, if you're trying to deploy this detection because this is the environment that I have, uh, that we have when we tested it. Uh, and then, yeah, pretty much the whole goal of this presentation is to utilize your logs. Uh, so you can use whatever sim solution you want, Splunk, Elk, ArcSight. I can go, I can, I can keep going on and on, but you get the idea. So yeah, so there's two types of detection that I will be sharing. Uh, the, first, the first one will be the low-hanging foots, the easy detection that easy to create and easy to bypass. The next one is a uh, more complicated detection, uh, the advanced detection uh, based on TTP or behavior of the tools. Uh, it's really kind of hard to make, but also kind of hard to bypass by the uh, attacker. So we'll see. So the first tool, uh, we call it uh, Infinity Shell, not we call it, <laughs> the maker call it Infinity Shell. Uh, the tagline is like, sure, we can hook it because uh, the people from Jaffly Networks, when they make this, all they do in the tools is just hooking, hooking, hooking. They hook the system management automation.dll, the library of PowerShell. They hook the system corridor.dll to bypass the logging mechanism. And then they hook the anti-malware uh, mechanism. They just hook everything. But it is work perfectly fine because when they hook it and then they overwrite the input length for those attributes, the three uh, attribute buff, uh, into zero length. So it's pretty much non-existent, which equals to not functioning PowerShell detection, which is great for them. Uh, so we have five detection here. Uh, we got the first one is low hanging fruits. So as you can see there, uh, there is uh, a DLL called uh, InfiCCL Profiler.dll. And then there's a bat file that run with pat as admin. So these files are pre-compiled already, so it's available on the GitHub. So when people run it as is, you can detect it. That's the goal of low-hanging fruits. Uh, you detect it by using Sysmon Event 97 and Sysmon Event 91, and you deploy the role in your scene. Uh, when you run the tools the first time, you will see this unique trace on Sysmon Event 91. Uh, you will see a PowerShell in the command line section, in the command line field, just PowerShell, no exe, no parameters, etc. And then the parent command line will uniquely be uh, exe that is calling a bat file or that is being, yeah, you, you get the idea. So there's exe and the bat file in the same parent command line. So you can combine these two uh, information and then make a detection out of it, which what we do, what I do. And then the next one, uh, this tool actually able to do some privilege escalation by adding some entries in the registry key. So we need to watch when they do this using rec exe, for example, uh, and then there is a certain value specifically in proc server 32 and those flag that you can see, uh, the parent command line will be the same uh, parent command line as the previous one. So you will have the dot exe and then the dot bat. Again, if you combine that and then you combine additionally the rec dot exe tools, um, you, you pretty much have pretty strong detection there. The next one, it's the inprox server uh, 32 registry key changes or additional, let's say. Uh, so if you see here, you can see the target object is the inprox server 32, but they're trying to load the malicious, in, not malicious, like the not PowerShell uh, DLLs that they are using, which is the official profiler.dll. So 
you can watch for anything that is not system 32 being loaded to this particular uh, target object, because that's kind of fishy. Uh, and again, you will be using Sysmon, specifically even ID13 uh, of the registry value set. Uh, the last detection for this tool, it's actually watching uh, the DLL being loaded to the legitimate PowerShell, because again, uh, it will hook the PowerShell library. So there will be, you need to load the module from the DLL to the EXE. But the thing is, usually PowerShell will load stuff from Microsoft because it's a Microsoft tools. And then you can also see the signature status, it's false and also unavailable. So that's kind of questionable. So we can combine this, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like. Uh, interesting thing, combine it together, and you can make a role out of it and start building detection. On it. And the next tool is PowerShell DLL. So it's not PowerShell, it's PowerShell DLL. And the tagline for it is, yeah, we got DLL for that because it's on the name already. Uh, so Penta pretty much uh, created, this is also uh, one of the tool that uh, having a lot of stars in GitHub. Uh, so this tool actually two mode, you can use the DLL mode, and then the EXE mode. For the DLL mode, uh, you need to use the DLL loader. So this is a low bus components that will be used. And you load the particular DLL that you feed, or you can use a pre-compile EXE. So you just run the double click the EXE and it will just like do the job. So you will use, there's options of five different uh, DLL loader thing or proxy execution uh, exe that you can use. So this binary is signed by Microsoft. So sometimes uh, it's not, it's normal when people whitelisted it. Uh, so make sure you pay attention in this particular area. And then moving forward for the exe mode, uh, it will load the exe itself. It load 57 PowerShell automation uh, DLLs and other supporting DLLs for the operation. So all the lists uh, all the 57 DLLs are listed on the appendix at the end of the presentation. For the detection, we get four things here. We get the low hanging fruits, which is simple thing like description field, product field, even the image, so the file name itself. Uh, so you can definitely use that. Again, this is a low hanging fruit detection. Just a tip, if you wanna change it, you can just go to the code before you compile it. And then those are the information by default, uh, the PowerShell DLL, the copyright 2016, you can easily change it to anything. But again, low hanging fruits detection, supposed to be easy detection. The next one, PowerShell DLL loading DLLs. To be precise, PowerShell DLL loading, the PowerShell DLLs, so the real PowerShell DLLs. So this is applicable for the DLL mode. For example, you're running it using the run DLL32.exe. And then run DLL32.exe is loading a bunch of PowerShell related DLLs. Like, it's like they're trying to do something related to PowerShell, right? So yeah, so that's what they're trying to do. So we can watch them again with the system on F97. Uh, and then more general to that, we can actually watching what the loaders do. So whenever they are loading unsigned DLLs or the DLLs that doesn't have any signature, we can create an alert on that but the problem with this, it's actually quite noisy. Uh, there's some application, third-party application that do this. Uh, on, on the top of my, I can say Notepad++ do that. So this is that's the first thing that triggers the role when we deploy it in the production. I'm like, okay. But yeah, you can whitelist it for sure. But the next one is uh, when the EXE mode loading 57 different DLLs. So this will happen in milliseconds, just like that. Uh, just instantly load 57 DLLs. And you can see all of this from Sysmon even 97, but make sure you add those DLLs into the Sysmon config. Just make sure you modify the config to watch for those uh, specific DLLs. Uh, for this, to make it easier or to make it detection better, you can use correlation or cardinality. Uh, so whenever one DLL being loaded, uh, the rule itself will look for the other 56 DLLs, if it's being loaded 
around maybe like in the last one minute or like in the last 50 seconds, etc. So you can just see if at the end, like as a bigger picture, if all of them being loaded at the same time. So some examples of correlation on the CM that you can do is Elasticsearch. I think they have cardinality rules. Uh, ArcSight correlation engine for sure. Uh, and then Splunk, if you can combine multiple indicators. So you, ha you will have 57 indicators. And then when everything trigger at the same time, you create a rule out of it. And then you can also use uh, Elastic Ki Kibana heat map. Uh, if you want your analyst to do that, just to look into stuff. And you can do it over Python for sure, because yeah, what Python cannot do, right? Powerless shell, the next tools, uh, the tagline is don't worry, we got Lullabas here because Mr. Unicoder, I think he's, I think he's in Montreal, local Canada also. Uh, so yeah, so he, what in his mind when making this tool is just to use a lot of Lullabas. Uh, there's two Lullabas specifically being used here, uh, the msbuild.exe that will be used to compile a payload that you send from the upside from attacker machine to the target machine. So it relies on the msbuild.exe for execution. Uh, so it will provide a script, either PowerShell or whatever, and then it will compile it for you. But the unique thing is they are not using the one that is already in the machine. So they bring <laughs> the whole exe from the outside and then rename it to something else. It can be something random, can be to a known process name, for example, cop.exe or cmd.exe. Uh, and then from there, it will get the instruction from the script file, from the PowerShell script or whatever script you provided. It will encode the command using certutil, another wall bus, and then they'll perform some kind of obfuscation, make it confusing for the analyst for the blue team. So you can see here, uh, the function and variable names is just like mumbo jumbo. You don't understand what it is. Uh, the last, com uh, not the last component, it's the component that is sitting on the upside on the attacker machine to generate all of those stuff are a powerless shell.py, which is a, like a Python code that pretty much the engine of the tool will uh, create everything. And then you can ship those three files to the victim machine. Uh, for the detection for the low hanging fruits, uh, we will have a uh, creation of the Remember that they will rename the msbuild.exe. So you can check on the .NET framework folder if there is any new exe file being created. For example, if you see cmd.exe created in the .NET framework folder, that will be so suspicious. Uh, you will be using sysmon if 11 for that. Power shell logging. Well, it's because uh, this tool is not really evading the PowerShell detection it is still recording the output of the PowerShell script being uh, de uh, deobfuscated. So after all the encoding, you can still see the final content of the code. You can detect more um, PowerShell payload, etc., using the even ID 4104 from the Microsoft, uh, I think it's app, app uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, moving on, uh, detecting the low bus. The first component, 3A, is uh, cert util. So because they encode the thing, the payload, they need to decode it in the victim machines. So they use cert util to decode the hex. So you can watch for any cert util doing decode hex function because it's actually really rare in the production. Uh, you can use this modify the one for that. And then the next part of it, the second half, it's a msbuild.exe. The rename one, so not really MS built as the name, but it is from the description field, you know it's MS built because the only way you can change the description field is to reverse engineer the whole application and then change the value, which is like too much work for just evading this stuff, right? So the MS build ODXC will, will be combined with the random 5 to 25 uh, upper and lower characters. So you can watch on that. Combination, Sysmon Infinity 1 again. Process masquerading, this is pretty much can cover not only these tools, but pretty much any masquerading, which is just always suspicious. So it, the file msbuild.exe being renamed to smss.exe, or on the right side, you can see it's a random uh, name, can't even pronounce it. Again, Sysmon Infinity 1 for both.
And then we have number five, the .NET DLL loading. So you see here in the image, it's smss.exe. We already know it's not SMSS, but we can see why does uh, smss.exe is loading a Microsoft build or MS build task DLL. So that's definitely suspicious. So you can build detection on this. This is money for 97 again. And lastly, uh, PowerShell DLL loading uh, that is always visible via process access. So again, uh, our, you know, like uh, that exe, SMS as exe can be seen making some access, trying to touch uh, poking system management automation dot DLL, which is again, it's a PowerShell engine. Like why would SMS as exe doing that? Like, are they trying to get some functionality out of it? Probably is. So you can use Sysmon if I to build that. You can combine all this information together. Uh, tools number four, no PowerShell. The tagline is, can you see sharp? Because Bits Admin create this tool uh, implemented in C sharp. So, and it, this is really popular these days. If, if you look for uh, offensive researcher, they are start using more C sharp, C sharp, C sharp, uh, which is because it's hard to detect C sharp operation because it's not using PowerShell. It's not using PowerShell DLLs. It's just goes straight to the native.NET library. Uh, and this tool, it's actually trying to mimic PowerShell. So you get the same CMD lets. Uh, for example, you have things like uh, get process, get user, etc. There's two modes. You can run it by using uh, run DLL32, again, similar to PowerShell DLL, uh, or you can run it using Cobalt Strike. The, there's two components uh, for Cobalt Strike. You get the exe file. And then you get the CNI, the Cobalt Strike file. For the DLL, there's two options that you can do, depending on your target machine. You can use the 30, 32-bit uh, DLL or the 64-bit DLL. And then you'll need to load it using RunDLL32. But I suspect you can use the other DLL loader. Uh, and it's exactly acting like a PowerShell DLL, DLL mode. We get four detection for this, uh, low-hanging fruits, uh, again, because it's written in C-sharp based on .NET, uh, just look for a description product just in case the user uh, forget to change it. Uh, because it is always true, true positive when this, uh, when this value showing up in your logs, this is not false negative. This is false. Uh, this is true positive always. So for the Cobalt Strike mode detection, well, unfortunately, our team doesn't have access to Cobalt Strike yet if we can find some cobalt strike people after this talk maybe we can build detection on it uh yeah but uh thanks to all of uh we get uh detection he created detection on this particular uh, mode uh by using event id8 from sysmon so you will see there uh, the event description of create remote threat uh, the process name will contain powershell.exe but the unique thing here, you will see that target process address will always end with 0B80, uh, which is really unique. Uh, but there's more story if you read in the blog. Uh, there's some interaction between him and also the creator of the tools. And for some, uh, they made some changes and then it's no longer the case. But still, if someone used the older version of the tools, they can still detect this. Uh, DLL modes, uh, again, similar to policy DLL, you need to watch the loaders. So whenever run DLL32 is loading unsigned or not a favorable signature uh, DLLs, uh, you create alert on that. And then the next one is uh, .NET version downgrading. So this has actually happened by mistake. So I forget that this tool require a lower version of .NET. So I run it in the version four or 4.5 if I recall, uh, and then it's just like, oh, I don't like this version. Can you bring it down? And it actually can. So it tries to call the fondue.exe, which is, uh, I think, a upgrade downgrade uh, exe on the Windows server, and then ask them to enable feature the NetFX3, 
to the version for the 2.3.5. Uh, so you can watch that on system one event ID1. But the thing is, a legitimate application might do this because, hey, who doesn't love doing backtrack using old application, right? So, yeah. Uh, other than that, we get some bonus here. Uh, we got two tools that is pretty similar to Powerless Shell or uh, no PowerShell for the Shark Pick. So the first one will be Powerline. It used MS Build, really remind you to Powerless Shell, a lot of compilation stuff. And Shark Creek will be, this is actually a tool that it used to demonstrate uh, or test the blocking of PowerShell and just to bypass AppLocker because I don't think a red teamers like AppLocker at all. Bonus detection ideas, system, Sysmon even ID 10, uh, process access. So any application that accessing PowerShell VLL, but not PowerShell because you are not supposed to do that. Uh, Windows PowerShell even ID for 103. So this is locked from PowerShell, but when the context application is not PowerShell, isn't it questionable? So yeah, I think we should be watching for that also. And lastly, you can use ETW uh, for, for .NET library tools. So you can analyze this mess, uh, this information using message analyzer and logman. Uh, but I think there's also some tools out there. I think uh, Splunk have like a converter for it. Uh, there is a sealed ETW. Uh, Roberto Rodriguez uh, played with it a bit. Uh, there's a series of blog talking about uh, analyzing more .NET logs. So I think it will be interesting for you to try. Well. That's pretty much the talk. Uh, it's pretty much, yeah, it's a compressed version as I mentioned. So if you like to know more, you can always go to the my presentation previously on Hackfest. Uh, just some messages for red team, blue team. So just do all of this stuff. Use PowerShell, update PowerShell now for blue team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And lastly, of course, be nice to each other. If you're a purple team, you can take both sides. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, right, we need to be nice for each other because we are in the same boat. At the end of the day, we are, we just want to be Megazord and protect our security uh, company, not security company, our organization. Uh, we work together uh, and then, yeah, we just upgrade our security posture. And all right, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to grab some Sigma rules on your way out because I made a lot of Sigma rules just for this presentation in the past week. Uh, I actually never wrote Sigma rules before, but I definitely know uh, what is Sigma rules now. So make sure you grab that. Uh, you can convert the Sigma rules to any other sim, Curator, Splunk, Elastic, ArcSight, whatever you want. Uh, you can use either oncoder.io and or sigma, but I tested it on oncoder.io, so all the sigma should be able to be converted to the other type if you use oncoder.io. But sigma is also an option if you like to do like CLI kind of thing. So I'm so sorry that I didn't mention my other attack right from the start, from the start because I'm a threat hunter. But yeah, I need to mention that all the rules, all 20 rules that I've made. Uh, for the four tools are mapped to the closest attack TTPs. And it is also using the newest version of the TTPs that are using sub techniques. So I try my best to map it. So if it's not, it's not perfect. Uh, if you want to change it for sure, you can do it. Uh, yeah. So this is the slides that you want to take a picture of, that you want to scan, that you want to send it to your, uh, I don't know, like uh, subordinates. Uh, so yeah, make sure you grab it. It's gonna take you to my GitHub. It's not gonna download anything funny, promise. Uh, special thanks to my employer, of course, for supporting me to do this, understanding, taking me, taking some time to do the research. Uh, Scooby MTL, uh, you sh should have attended his uh, workshop earlier today in the Blue Team Village because it is great. And also my friend of need, 13 of need for inspiration, guide and feedback, uh, my co-workers at work, literally under, uh, making me understanding PowerShell from zero to hero. Uh, and also .NET, I don't really like .NET. Amazing, not PowerShell tools creators, like making us, the blue teamers, need to spin our head around, do a lot of research. And lastly, uh, not lastly, InfoSec community, 
Olaf Hartongs for the detection, uh, and he will be speaking later tonight. So make sure you check that. Uh, Sigma team, uh, Mitre attack, of course, uh, and subprime and Taro Delayo because it's a really useful tool. And please, uh, at the last and not the least, uh, DEFCON and the Blue Team Village organizer, thank you so much for accepting my talks, for the volunteers, for your time, and all the attendees for the talk right now. Thank you so much. If you'd like to connect with me and my team, you can. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, on GitHub, on LinkedIn, if you like to do more professional. Or you can check out a blog uh, for my team, Threat Hunting Team on Medium, and Hunting Threat on Twitter. We post it stuff sometimes. And yeah, if you scan this uh, barcode, it will take you to the my GitHub page, pretty much where all my presentation is. So yeah, that's pretty much my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Tez, for the wonderful presentation. Um, as always, we encourage you guys to join our Blue Team Village Discord server and uh, ask questions in talk, text talk track one. And um, yeah, if there's no questions, I, which I do not see at the moment, I think we are set. And uh, the presenter will be around for a little bit to answer questions otherwise.